What's your name, please? Jim Monowick. And can you, you're a resident of Talmadge Creek? Yes. And can you tell me about when the oil spill happened? What, just get, give me your opinion of the story. Well, the day the oil spill happened, of course, uh, uh, came home from work, realized it had happened, and um, uh, quite honestly was expecting somebody to come into my driveway to call me up. Uh, that was responsible for the oil spill and talked to my wife and I tell us about what's going on so we knew uh, Unfortunately, nobody ever came nobody ever called uh, we didn't get anything in the mail uh, It was approximately I believe a week and a half after the oil spill um, that uh, um, um, We were starting to hear about meetings so red zone meeting yellow zone meeting um, and we I went to the red zone meeting that was at the Marshall Township Hall and uh, they would not let me in because my name was not on a list. We were trying to get information uh, that we weren't getting. Um, so I ended up, uh, I heard about a yellow zone meeting. Um, we went to the yellow zone meeting and uh, that's when we started understanding what had happened. Uh, to this day we have never, although we have asked, We've never received any information on uh, the chemicals, the oil, uh, the MSDS, what's in the oil. Uh, we've never been offered a hotel room. Uh, it was two weeks before they came and tested our air. After that, certainly things were all cleared up in terms of the benzene. Um, we've lived with it. Um, we've lived with the noise, the construction, and this is what this is, is an industrial construction site. Um, it's in our backyard. We live 200 feet from the creek. Um, but Enbridge has not forwarded us any information at all, period. Uh, we've asked for it. Uh, we've never received it. We've been ignored. We've been intimidated. Uh, we've been... Um, Can you tell me about the intimidation? Well, uh, for example, when we we, we, we... we had an attorney from day one. And uh, as a result, when Enbridge uh, found out, their lead, lead counsel uh, emailed our attorney and said how unfortunate it was that we got sought legal counsel and that from now on we'd be dealing with him. Uh, and uh, I could go on and on and, and, and cite you other examples about intimidation. When the creek was being remediated the first time, I'd come back to the creek and I would be uh, uh, confronted by their uh, Enbridge's uh, people and they did not want me back there. It was my own property, you know. And um, why, do you, why do you think they didn't want you on your own property? I don't, I think just like they didn't want I don't to think see. they want the story out there any more than they have to, whether it's a video, whether it's just a set of eyes. I don't think they want it. I don't think they want it. You're, we you're have called Everidge right through that. my attorney. We have it. Uh, everything's documented. My wife and I are taking all kinds of pictures. Uh, I'm back here today taking pictures, actually. We write things down and um, every day. And... Um, um, although Enbridge says we want to settle with people, we want to make you whole, we want to make it right with you, the fact of the matter is they don't, okay? And I'm only going by the historic record that we have based upon the number of times that we've contacted Enbridge and asked them if we could get together and talk. And either they don't return your phone calls or they say, well, let's talk Tuesday at 2. They never call. Right. I'll call you. They never call. It has been... I can't even begin to tell you how many times, they, they, and that's part of the, you know, uh, um, I don't know, I'd almost say the intimidation, the fact that, you know, we'll deal with you and we get good and ready. Right. And that's the way they're approaching us. We have not signed, as of today, we have not signed a total release of claims. And what's, do you know the date today? February? Today is February, what, 27th, I believe, 26th? 2011. 2011, that's 2011, right. 2012. 2012. I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> right. 2012. Right. Let's get it right. But, um... I'm glad you uh, corrected me. Yeah, the only time Enbridge has called us and really shown any interest in anything in terms of trying to settle is when they want something from us. That so this is, is the, the second time. time. Last year they they cleaned this. At, right after the, the, the oil spill. In 2010, right. so two years ago. Right, August, September, as you know. And so there was what I remember two foot of grass here. I mean. Oh yeah. Well, this was all woods. Yeah, and and so they came back. Destroyed. They came back through and redug all this out. And um, why do you think they did that? Well, because they never cleaned the bottom of the creek. Plus, more and as important, they buried oil. All right. And there were two occasions when I called Enbridge and I said, "You buried oil on my property. I want you to dig it out." Right. It was September. 
I think the presidential order was, they had to have it cleaned up by the 27th of September of that year. It was that weekend, I called them. They worked around the clock. They were out in here, 24 hours a day, digging oil. And you can see right here on my neighbor's property even, where, where this is dug out wider than creek, there was buried oil right there. Now they just haven't filled it in yet. That's why it's, you know, in the condition that it's in. But um, they buried oil, and uh, they're here now to dig up that oil and to dig the bottom of the creek where there was a lot of oil. Now you've came to a couple meetings that I was at where I gave speeches and stuff. Do you believe everything I'm saying from what you know of your experience with Enbridge? Um, with the, with the cover-up and the, the oil being buried? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I've, yeah, I believe it because I called them, like I said, back in September of 2010 about buried oil. And I have the video when they dug it up. And, but, you know, we didn't, you know, and that's when I called uh, 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 Enbridge and I said, hey, you guys, are, you guys are burying oil on my property. You know, and they says, well, how can you prove it? I says, well, prove that you didn't. I said, I watched them. Right. You know, and then. Um, uh, Can I help you? Then they came back and and, and started digging, and, and you ought to see the oil come up out of the ground. This gentleman owns oh, this geez. property. We have permission. We have permission to be here. How are you? We're just talking to the resident, saying how you buried oil and he watched you bury it, and how you're redigging it up now. I don't know why it's a big deal that you're doing what you're doing. I don't know why that would be a because big deal. Because it costs them. I'm making the reputation. Okay, this is why. There's a $5.5 billion project with a B going through Canada. Yeah. They're using my videos as evidence because this is the company that's putting right. that pipe through. Right. Right. They're using my videos to show the sick people, buried oil, the documents. My videos are right now 80% of all of Canada is voting against this. But the Prime Minister owns... Our, our, um, his dad's is oil, I don't know what you would call him, racketeer, tyrant, whatever, but yeah. he's the son of it. And so he's trying to push this through, the residents don't want it, and the Indian nations own the property, mm -hmm. yeah. and they won't give it up. And so, they're using, my videos are big. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I'm the only evidence, I'm the only person that's ever risked their job to do this, their mm -hmm. career, death threats. Um, I got hit over the head, I got a scar, most people would have quit. I, I don't have kids, I don't have nothing. I, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I have a purpose. And they're trying to redig up buried oil. Uh, you see, they're putting sand right here. Um, but we're just going to see you how bad this really was. And I have videos in the past when I was a worker of them not cleaning this up properly, me making complaints, and them not doing anything about it. But just to show you the extent of how much is being dug up by yourself. You'd be done. You'd be, you'd be stuck and you'd die. Because sometimes I've been stuck for a half an hour up to my waist, oh, up to my chest. Down. I just stuck down to my chest. Um, they said this was clean before, right? Yep. Um, I mean like they said they were coming back and redigging it up before or they said it was clean? No, they said it was clean. And when was this, do you think? Middle of the summer. What did you just say about Enbridge? What they tell you and what actually happens are two different things. I mean, we're only talking about 
two football fields, about 600 yards maybe, or, or uh, 600 feet approximately that we just walked. This is two miles long, not counting all the oil that went into Kalamazoo River. We know it went 40 miles at least, and probably even more. Well, you know what, I get really, my blood pressure goes right up right now when somebody approaches me on my property and asks me stuff like that. So I said, just a minute. And she rolled the tape, and it was actually on news that night. As I went up to him and I said, he's a big guy. I said, what can I do for you? He says, I want to know what's going on over here. I said, well, I'll tell you what's going on over here. You're standing on private property. I did not invite you here. I said, so I suggest if you don't want to be arrested and thrown in jail, that you go back the same way you came and you leave. I said, and I'm not asking you, as a matter of fact, I'm telling you, I don't want you here. And uh, he said, well, I need to know what's going on. I said, I told you what's going on. Now you can leave or else you can get arrested. I don't really care. I just assume you get the hell off my property. And she taped, that was all, she was still running this tape. Wish I had that. <laughs> it's on Channel 17 Fox. I mean, I'll look for it. Uh, Lisa LaPlante. Yeah, she I know her. And so uh, the guy walked off. It was about two weeks later. I just found that odd that you know these, we, these workers are very dedicated to, to Enbridge, I'm telling you. We were told every morning not to allow anybody to videotape or take pictures at all. Nobody was allowed near, and they made it out like it was a safety hazard. Like, you have to protect them. Don't let them down here. Don't let them buy the oil. And that is very intelligent for Emirates to do that because you don't have a lot of documentation. And they would call the cops if a landowner was down there. The tire wall? Fuck yeah. There's tire ball I, know. There. I just come I just come from there. Well, How you doing, sir? What's up? I'm pissed. I hate these fuckers. <laughs> John Bowlingball? You a resident here? I live right there. You live right over there? Yep. Well, your blood's pumping. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Why? No, I ain't saying no more. <laughs> Say it. Say what you feel. That'll shoot the lying bastards. For doing what? Lying to everybody about everything. You gotta tell me more. Because people don't understand what... They want to know what you're talking about. Tell the camera. Well, about the goddamn oil spill and all this shit and lying to people, covering up everything. I have seen them where they've thrown shit across stuff. How mad are you? Well, if I said what I wanted to, then I want you to take say it. They had to shoot them. Hang the son of a bitches. That's all. There's nothing wrong with saying that because you haven't said a name. You're saying a company. <laughs> well, what company are you so mad at? Embridge themselves. I don't understand. Everybody thinks Embridge says that they're doing a great job. Yeah, they're doing a great job at covering up. That's what. And what do you want them to do to make it right? Put people where they're where they can breathe, where they can have a healthy life. So you feel they've ruined your life? Yeah, they have. Okay, tell me more about that. What kind of quality life am I going to have? And I said, you know, I'm 48 years old. I shouldn't be like that now. Just wanted to show you, I'm five foot ten, and this is deeper than me. That's how much oil was buried and now being re-dug up.